welcome back to the show to talk about the 2016 presidential race. Congressman Ron Paul is on the show. Dr. Paul is also a former congressman, of course. He's also the founder of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. Now, recent polls show that Donald Trump and Ben Carson are still leading the field with Carly Fiorina just behind in third place. So I first asked Dr. Paul what he thinks it says that the three candidates from the private sector are doing the best. Does that mean that the economy is the foremost issue on the minds of Americans? Here's what he had to say. Well, pr probably so, but on the Democrat side, you have somebody like Bernie Sanders, and he's been in nothing else other than politics, and, and he's doing pretty well, and most incumbents are going to be reelected. So I think some of this stuff in the presidential rate is orchestrated by the major media, and uh, it's entertainment, and they have competitions going on and on. So I don't put a lot of stock into this. It's still, you know, pretty early. I'll, 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 before I have a strong opinion, I'll wait until I see the first election. Well, since uh, Donald Trump is in the lead right now, and we are talking about uh, the economy, when you think about him and how he will lead on that front, uh, what do you think about? I mean, what kind of economy should we envision with him uh, as president? And uh, furthermore, how would it compare to that of a libertarian economic platform, like that of uh, Senator Rand Paul, for example? Well, I, I think Trump's an authoritarian, and he brags about it. I'm the, I'm the boss, and I'm telling people what to do. Well, government happens to be a little different than that. The only thing that you want to do if you believe in the marketplace is you want to get rid of the government. But he's, ex he's talking about having, uh, uh, you know, strong taxes uh, on imports. He, he wants to punish people, and he's the boss. So I think he'd be very dangerous to the economy, uh, even though he's signing an accord because people are frustrated, and he says, I'm going to bring jobs back. Well, uh, you don't do that with protectionism. Protectionism makes things much worse. So, uh, yes, he's, uh, he's getting a lot of attention right now, but he is an authoritarian. He wants to uh, run people's lives and run the world and run the economy because that's the way he lives his life. And, uh, you know, on occasion he comes up with a correct idea, but uh, an authoritarian is the opposite of a libertarian. A libertarian wants to release creative energy to the individuals. We want to get the government out of our lives and out of the economy and out of all, the, all these places around the world. So it's quite a bit different than the way an authoritarian would approach our problems. Okay, well, some of the issues that have been noticeably absent in the GOP presidential debate so far are, are that of income inequality, the growing gap between the rich and the poor, wage growth, student debt, etc. These are issues that are important to a lot of young people. So my question is, why haven't they been addressed, and, and should they be addressed more appropriately? Yes, they should be, and I've done some programs on that. I talk about it all the time. Of course, I'm not in politics anymore. But, uh, no, I think it's a big deal because I've concentrated throughout my political career on economic policy, especially on monetary policy. And uh, the Austrian School of Economics teaches that if you have a fiat currency, paper money, and you have a central bank, you literally destroy the middle class because the money gravitates to the very wealthy, and you wipe out the middle class, and the poor get poorer. And that's exactly what's happening. You saw what the Federal Reserve did and Treasury did with the crisis in 08 and 09. They bailed out all the rich people. They created trillions of dollars, but the poor people, uh, you know, a lot of them lost houses, a lot of them are in debt now up to their ears uh, because they're trying to get an education, but they don't get good jobs when they're finished. So it is a consequence of economic interventionism, and the worst intervener is the Federal Reserve because they are the economic planners. Uh, libertarians don't like economic planning, uh, but we live with it because money, the money issue and the price of money is involved in every transaction that we do because uh, uh, the government dictates, you know, the interest rates. And this, uh, this is the, the reason why we have these problems. And of course, uh, if you understand this, uh, we have to do something about central banking and central economic planning. Well, I want to definitely talk about that in just a moment. I want to turn to the U.S. economy because the broad U.S. stock market, uh, for example, is down more than 10 percent since its May peak. Uh, there's still a good number of investors out there who are viewing the recent market turbulence as a correction. Others, however, say we're headed towards a bear market, potentially on the verge of a bigger downturn. How do you see it? 
Well, I think it's just the beginning of the downturn. Uh, nothing has really happened yet. You know, a few, uh, a few dollars lost a couple weeks ago, and even this week, uh, 300 points down. But it's totally chaotic. Everything is uh, misdirected because of the price of money. So there are bubbles every place. You have a stock market bubble. You have still bubble making in uh, housing. When you see houses selling for $500 million, and you have a bubble in student loans, uh, 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 $1.3 trillion worth of debt. So the bubbles are all over the place. And uh, th this, is, this is the problem. Uh, so I don't see an easy way out. I think the market's going to go down a lot more when it's realized how serious this is. And uh, actually, we're doing better than the rest of the world. But uh, we're in for trouble, too, because uh, the world has never had a situation like this where the whole world endorsed a paper currency and had pyramiding of debt around the world by by the uh, reserve currency, which is the dollar. So uh, it's the biggest bubble ever, so it's going to be the biggest crash ever, but uh, it remains to be seen exactly when that's going to hit. But I don't think that all of a sudden you're going to see, oh, this is a little 10% correction. Next year we're going back. What a, if, you, if you have a little bit of a slump, what is the Fed going to do? Lower interest rates when they're already zero? Right. It's difficult to do that tool. when they're already, of course, near zero. But I do want to ask you, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, who we attribute or what I, what we attribute, I should say, the volatility to. Of course, uh, we've asked a lot of economists on our show about that. Some have said that they uh, would point to China. Some have said that they would point more to the Federal Reserve. Where do you stand? How do you allocate the blame, if you will? Well, back, back to the source of the trouble, and that's the Fed. Everything is malinvestment. They can't make correct decisions in an economy like this. In a true free market economy, you have to have people work, use what they need to live on, and then save money, and that dictates interest rates and tells the businessman what he should do. Well, that isn't the way it works anymore. The so-called capital comes from the Fed, and they create it out of thin air. So everything is a mistake and everything is going to be volatile. You can do this for a while when a country is very, very wealthy and a currency is very, very strong. But eventually, people mistrust the government. They can't pay the debt. They don't pay interest, but they have a huge amount of principal to pay. And corporations are deeply in debt. They borrow a lot of money since there's a, a, you know, a practically for free, and they buy up their stocks. So it's, uh, it, it's a mess. That it has been is artificial, has nothing to do with freedom, has nothing to do with free markets. And the sooner we realize this, the sooner we'll get rid of central economic planning and especially look into the serious problems we get from the Federal Reserve System.